Before we start, don't forget to like and subscribe. It really means the world to me, and I hope more people can learn from the video. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Quinton, and in this video, I'm going to show all of you how to display a simple text in MASM uh, 32 bit, or more commonly known as MASM X86. Okay, so without further ado, I'll just jump right in. But uh, you look at the screen right now, and you might be wondering what app is this, and you could just download this email 8086 on this website. Just search email 8086, and you will find this website where you can just download this app. Uh, why did I choose to use this app? It's because uh, whenever you run the code, you can step through it. Uh, you can run it step by step, so we can take a look at the conditions of each uh, register. So you can debug it quite easily. I mean, you can try it using, you can compile your code using um, DOSBox. I would stop you from doing so, but it will become more harder. And maybe I will do that. I will teach you how to do that in another video. So without further ado, let's jump right in. So I will I will not jump into the theory first. I will just uh talk. I will just teach you how to write code by code. Uh, I mean write the code line by line, and I will explain you the theory line by line as well. So we will start by specifying the model. Okay. So what does this line mean? Uh, I have a uh, wait. Okay, so I'm reading from this book. It's it's uh, it's by Irvine, and you can download it online as well. And this model directly specifies which memory model your program will use. So basically, small means your the your program is small. Just just that simple. We don't need to uh dwell on it for too long because. For just remember this, keep it on your in your mind that every time we run the program, we will need this. And the next line is dot spec sixty four. So basically, it allocates a small amount of local spec space for your program. So sixty four means we are allocating a uh, sixty four bytes for our program. And next is dot data. This is the data segment. So in assembly language, we have in our program we have a few segments. And each has their own function. I won't get into that too deep, but the data segment basically stores the a variable, the variables that you are going to use in your program. So next we will go to dot code, and this is the code segment. This is another segment. This is the the part where you will actually store your code. So main prompt. This is specifying the start of your uh program. Okay, so like the main in Java or C++ where you basically run your code and after that we will need to call move ax at data and move ds at ax so these lines basically means that okay you can check it out here and uh data is refers to the starting location of the data segment okay so it is where where are uh, it is specifying where the variables are stored. So you need to move it to AX. AX is a register, and then this is destination. So you move from add data to AX, and from AX you move to DS to store them to store the beginning of main. Eh, sorry, to store the starting location of the data segment. Okay, I hope you get it. And then that is just the starting part of it. And now we will just move to. Uh, this code move as for ch move ah for ch and i think 21 h uh, basically this is just the end this specifies the end of the the program so let's say you are right you are you are uh, driving a car and when you park it you need to move it move your gear to the parking gear and you can't just get get out of the car without moving from the without changing from driving gear to uh, uh the parking gear so this is the analogy of it. And at this point you need to stop the you need to tell the program to stop. Okay. 
So I'll just call it as it. And by the way, this is the way how you would do a make a write a command. So this line would not be executed. Uh, in Python, you do something like this. And in Java, you might Java or C plus you might do something like slash. Okay, so that's it. And we are not done yet. There is a few lines left. Main and P. This specifies the endpoint of the main, the main, what do you call that? Uh, the main. Okay, yeah. From here to here, yeah. This is the main, and we are here. We are specifying the endpoint, and then we just type end main. Yes, that simple. That's me. I'm oh, sorry, end main. So yeah, this specifies the endpoint, and we just end it. Okay. So let's run and see if there is any trouble. No, so it's running successfully, but. Unfortunately, we have nothing here. We don't see a command from because we haven't actually do, we didn't actually do anything in this code. So right now I will show you how to display a text. We will use the most popular hello world. So hello world. So first we need to specify the name. I mean the what you call it the identifier, which is the name of the variable. Let's say we call it text. You could make it text two, text three, uh, any text or anything that you would like. Text and db means byte. The size of the variable is in byte. We have word, and uh, we have quad word. We have paragraph as well. But for this time, uh, byte will be enough. And we'll write hello world. Okay, but take note of this. You must take note of this okay this is very very important so you need to put a dollar sign to specify this is the end of the string okay or i mean in, if you are from other languages you'll call this a string right but we need a dollar sign to specify it is the end of the string so if if you don't do this uh the the, the computer the program won't know that it is the end of the string and it will it won't throw any errors but when you are running your code when you are running your code you will see a lot of random stuff going on and you will just go crazy okay so just remember when you are doing with string uh when you are dealing with a string you start with quotes i mean you you uh what you call that i mean you start with string and you end i mean you start with quote and you end with quote okay yeah okay and then you end with a dollar sign okay uh, after your your text yeah just like this and Okay, so first we will do move a h. Uh, move a h. Let me ah uh, yeah zero nine h. This is the code for the instruction. So we have zero two h. We just display by but in this case we are actually we are actually uh we are basically displaying a string. So we need to use zero nine h and we move uh move to the x the our name of variable. So if you make this text two, then it will be text two. Okay. Okay, simple. Okay. Then, ninety twenty one h. This is basically specifying that this, but uh, this actually and we will consider it as interrupt. Yeah, that means every time we run an instruction, we need to call this, and this is the same concept as this, which is to to uh stop the current instruction. Okay, so these three line they are connected to each other. Okay. Yeah, okay, so I would say um print hello world to make this code more meaningful. So I hope everything goes well. Oops, uh move dx. Oh sorry, this should be LUA. And don't just don't worry about it. Every time you print a string, you just need to do this, okay? Just keep that in mind. Okay, so I'll run and yep, you see this hello world, okay. So um before we actually end I would like to type here as well this mean a small program but every time you run a, a a program I mean if you start designing a program in MASM x86 uh you start with this okay you could save this anywhere as uh, you don't this as well you could just save this anywhere because every time you need to start with this and this is the um what you call that yeah, the the size of stack space and 
which is data segment code segment and um start of main exit and yeah end of main and end of program and call this game okay move Starting location of data segment to DS of U A X and move from A X to yes because you can't just do this to this. Okay. So I hope this video that you can learn how to run a successful a successful a simple but successful program and I'll continue to see you in the future. Thank you. And before we end, don't forget to subscribe. So. Right, uh, I mean, it means a lot to me and, and I'll continue to make more valuable video in the future. Thank you.